पुण्यम वक्तुम हिमाद्री दर्शनोद्भवम अहम अप सर्थो अस्मि दिव्य वर्ष शतर अपि इन ए हंड्रेड डेज इज ऑफ गॉड आई कुड नॉट टेल दी द ग्लोरीज ऑफ हिमालय Besides bestowing solemnity of thought and conviction, the lofty heights of sprawling Himalayan ranges have always been instrumental in inspiring the artist and mankind. Tradition of the solemnity of conviction and creativity of human genius has been quite old in this region, older than the over 500 years old memory of this culturally rich town of Almora in Kumau Himalaya. This hilly road journeying Almora with Pithoragar is like an unfurled scroll written by on at large the story of this most ancient relationship This rock shelter on the wayside painted almost 5000 years before Christ as the experts say is an oldest surviving and the most eloquent testimony to this age old bond As for the solemnity of conviction, this unassuming temple of Kola Devta on the Mount of Chitai is a living example of the simple faith. A justice-loving prince of medieval ages, Kola has become the divine dispenser of justice as the centuries roll by. His temple is regarded here as the final court of appeal against all injustices, having written his complaint on a paper or at times on a stamp. and putting it anywhere in the shrine a devotee feels relieved and assured these countless bells offered by the devotees speak eloquently of the faith of common man on the god made out of nothing The 9 km straight on the Salmora Pitoraga road before you take a left hand turn this narrow driveway playing hide and seek with the clumps of age old devdars leads you to the temple group of Jageshwar this picture is valley is the seat of Shaivism in Kumau Himalaya it is ancient enough to get mentioned in the puranic literature Himadre Ruttare Parshwe Devdaru Vanam Param Pavanam Shankarasthanam Tat Sarve Shivochita In the northern flanks of Himalaya there is a dense cover of cedar trees being the seat of Lord Shiva it is holy enough and all the people there worship him On the top of this dense forest is an expanse called Jhankar Sand as goes the ancient story after the self immolation of Sati the desolate Shiva took a rigorous penance here a curse by the legendary seven sages caused his lingam or phallus to drop down in this valley this lingam called yagish or yageshwar in puranic literature was consecrated here as nagesh and is said to be one of the 12 jyotirlingams vedanath chitabhumo nagesham darukavane in the days of yo to many the ultimate culmination of all earthly desire was the crowning glory of a visit to the sacred place by which the sins of former births were forgiven and exemption from the chain of births and rebirths obtained each rock rivulet or tree here is dedicated to some deity or saint and has its own appropriate legion nature in a wildest and most rugged form sir be a witness to the correctness of the belief that here is the valley of great gods 
People say that the landscape here was littered with 200 odd temples. Among the kings of central Himalaya, constructing temple at Jageshwar was the most prevalent mode of worship. These temples are devoid of epigraphical evidences of substance. Speculation on stylistic consideration only work in proving the association of these temples with some of the known rulers of Kumar. Archaeologists hold that three different waves of construction dating back from 7th to 13th century AD are clearly perceptible in this group, though an earlier date has also been ascribed to the initiation of these monuments. The first and the earliest phase in the monument of Jageshwar is noticed in these three principal shrines of Lord Jagannath, Mrityunjaya and Dandeshwar, all signifying different aspects of Lord Shiva. These imposing Shikra shrines are said to be the earliest specimen of art in entire Kumar Himalayas and are credited to Katyuri kings of the region. During the early medieval period, bricks were completely replaced by stone. Amazingly large just stone slabs were transported from distant places for constructing these temples. It is further assumed that by about 7th century AD, iron was locally produced for making clamps to bind masonry pieces. Except for the Jagannath shrine, which is Pancharat in execution, all these temples follow a square plan. These shrines rise to an elevation of about 50 feet each. The later Gupta practice of using slanting slab to cover the roof may be seen here. The Adishthana molding is decorated with lotus petals. The janga or the wall portion begins with flower or vase motif. The top panel of the niche contains the portrayal of Shiva Trimurti. Finally, there is Kirtamuk symbol, the niche on the Mrityunjaya temple having elongated udgams represent a definite pratihara element found in old central Indian temples. The shikara is curvilinear with broad offset and is like the Naga temple. The terminating point, which is a square, is mounted with Amalka Shila. This parasol on the top of each temple, renovated and replaced though from time to time, is to drain off the snow. The doorway of the sanctum, pillars, etc., following the later Gupta practice, are carved with vase and floral motifs. The most remarkable feature of this age is the culmination of an art idiom. In its initial stage, it was influenced by the Gupta art and attained its full development in close parallel with that of the Gujar Pratihara style. The second phase of construction to which a period of 9th century has been ascribed by the scholars is represented here through the temples of Navagra, Lakulisha and Nataraj. These shrines, though comparatively smaller, are best preserved at Jageshwar. This temple of Navgra, facing to the north, with a wagon-shaped roof placed transversely to the entrance, carries a different conception from other monuments of Kumau. The origin of this type, scholars suggest, goes back to the Buddhist Chaitya halls. The shrines of Lakulisha and Nataraja also consist of the Chaitya arch used as an ornamental motif with splendid mythological compositions of Lakulisha flanked by his four disciples and Shiva's Tandav. In the 8th and 9th century AD, Jageshwar was an important center of Lakulisha Savism. It was founded in 2nd century AD in far of Gujarat to refute rigid Brahmanism and its followers used to observe strange and unsocial practices. An interesting feature of the temples of this period is profusely carved doorway gems. Besides the twin river goddesses, they contain platework bands formed of interwoven nagas with Gavaksha network. Lakulisha shrine, like the Jaina temples of Pattadakal, contains Makarmuk symbol. 
These temples are also credited to Kathuri kings who were at the zenith of their power about the beginning of 9th century. A receptive lot of royalty, they would have welcomed the transmission of alien ideas in their temple architecture. The third sect was initiated by the dynasty which had its rise in the extreme east of Jageshwar. They were called Chanda kings. Historians, though not without controversy, attribute the construction of these temples to the first ruler of the dynasty who has been assigned the date of circa 1000 AD. In Jageshwar, along the Kedareshwar group of temples, there are around 35 temples of this type. The shikra in these temples attains a rapid thinness and a marked attenuation at the end. The pinnacle of the temple ends in a square and is covered by a slightly raised Amalka Shila with a Kalasha on top resembling it to an umbrella. Almost all the temples of Kumau were ravished by Rohila iconoclast in the 18th century. Jageshwar, however, remained untouched. It is said that the troops of Ali Muhammad Khan Rohila were attacked by the swarms of Hornet when he was on his way to make an assault. The entire story of the development of Komauni art idiom, religion and faith is thus preserved in this natural museum. It is believed to be the seat of Vajrayana Buddhism before the advent of Shankaracharya to whom tradition ascribes the date of 8th century AD. These bronze icon placed in the Jageshu shrine clearly betray Buddhistic impact. Another icon stolen from the temple in 1974 and placed in a nearby museum after recovery has been identified by the art critics as representing Bodhisattva Lokeshwara. Much of the sculptural wealth the group once housed has been removed to museums, yet some of the finest mukhlingams ever produced in northern India are still enshrined here. An old route to Kailash Mansarovar also happened to pass through here. Bands of pilgrims on way to Rupkund in Nanda Devi region in higher Himalayas where, in order to attain salvation, they used to kill themselves by diving from a steep rock into a deep gorge, perform their principal worship in this temple of Mrityunjaya. These more than a thousand year old writings on the pillars have preserved the names of few such pilgrims. Still in the month of Shravana, people from all over hills come to Jageshwar. In a collectively offered worship, small lingams from locally available clay are made, anointed with rice, barley and vermilion. After an elaborate worship, these lingams are immersed in a stream close by called Jatha Ganga. The awful solemnity and weird grandeur of the landscape here definitely has an appeal to all that is romantic in the human heart. Solemnity of conviction together with the creativity of human genius has indeed made Jageshwar the finest abode of the great Indian heritage.